You and I this hour are going to be hanging out with lead singer Tony from the 80s rock band The Outfield. Now, Tony, tell me uh, about your upbringing and who were you listening to uh, growing up there in London, England? Well, me and John and Alan are all pretty much just sort of the same, uh, come from the same background from the east end of London. And we all grew up listening to great bands in the 60s, you know, like the Beatles and the Who and the Stones. And we just all, got, all basically got the same sort of uh, culture and influence of music. So, Tony, tell me how you uh, met the other guys in the band and how it became the outfield. Well, we've been in bands, John and Alan, we'd been in bands before and we'd sort of, um, just before the punk uh, era exploded and we were in a, like a progressive band. And then uh, rather than try and compete with that, we, we disbanded for a while and John had already been, had been writing songs in a local studio and Alan, me and Alan go back to basically, we, we formed a school band together and John went, he, he went to a neighbouring school. So everyone in, in Eastern of London, it was such a small community, we all pretty much knew each other. So we go back quite, quite a few years, about 30 years. And Tony, with you guys being together for 30 years, that's so great that you guys still have the opportunity to do what you guys love to do and still play music together. Yeah, we, we, we still love making music, you know, because we just, you know, it's our favorite hobby. And, you know, obviously when the Play Deep took off, you know, it was, uh, you know, it was, we was in a sort of a bit of a tour bubble, you know, so uh, to have got through that and still being friends it's, it's, it's been great for us yeah that's that's wonderful now now tell me tony when when you guys got together as the outfield how did that first recording contract come about well we um basically got hooked up with a, an Amer american manager and he said he would um get us a, a, a record deal with emi a friend of his he knew was going from emi to cbs which is now sony and um he played in the demo tapes and we basically got a, a record deal just on the strength of the demo songs and, the, and a photograph. Um, how did you guys all collaborate on that first album? Like, what were your one of your you know favorite tunes on that first album? It's hard, it's really hard to pick the sort of favorite tunes, but obviously, I you know we we still I still love singing Your Love live, and it's you know it's to, to, to this day we're still surprised at the success it got. You know, just from one song that uh, basically you know John had written, you know, sort of. 1983, way back in 93, and we just basically written in in, the, in an apartment where he lived, and uh, we were just basically recording, holding down day jobs and recording of the night time, and in between gigs, and we just kept on it. We just sort of just focused and kept working hard. Right, and I, and I love that song, Your Love. I get a lot of requests for that tune. They're like, and they, and and like, it's <laughs> callers will call up and they'll sing it to me, and I'm like, oh yeah, 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 the outfield. That's a great song. That's a great song. I'll play that. Uh, what a great song that was. It's it's weird because the first single off the album was Say Isn't So, and because it did it did well for us in in territories, but not nationally. And we went home uh, in 1985 for that Christmas, and uh, Your Love was just put to AOR radio just to keep us on the radio while we were off the road and it just, you know, it just grew and grew and grew and got so popular that we were quite, you know, quite amazed at how, how popular that song was and still is today. So Tony, uh, tell me a little bit, what, what are you uh, specifically doing uh, these days? Are you working on any solo projects or just with the outfield exclusively or what are you working on, Tony? Well, basically just the three of us have been, as I said, we've, we've known each other since school. So we've never really wanted to work with anyone else. We've just been really good friends and just, you know, we're just recording for fun, really. And, you know, anything sort of went beyond that. It was a bonus for us. Uh, we, 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 we put out an album uh, in the summer called Replay. That's out on iTunes at the moment. And um, we just did an album just for us because uh, Alan had left the band in 89 and we wanted to get Alan back in and just do an album just for us, seeing if it was going to be the last album we ever did. We just wanted to just do an album just for us and for the, for the fans. Very nice. Very nice. That's always great that you guys can come back together. I mean, after 30 plus years and get back in the studio and make another great album. That's awesome. Yeah, because we love love recording. You know, the, the day you stop enjoying it is, is you know is the day to stop altogether. Because a lot of a lot of bands get to get together again just just for the money, and we just we just like just making music together. I totally agree, Tony. Tony Lewis, thank you so very much for being part of the '80s experience tonight. I really appreciate it. Thank you, Jeremy. Thank you for inviting me onto your lovely show.